Hello everyone, I am Mr. Indigo, and welcome back to the vision of Aurora Borealis. Last time we met, we ate dinner with her, and she kind of pissed her off, so let's go. Hey, hold on. She looked exactly like the proud kid who wants to show her parents something she achieved. Gregla loosened her grip from my hand and dashed a few meters away. Throwing her arms behind her back, she closed her eyes and lifted her nose to inhale the air. That's kind of weird. Suddenly, a breeze swept through. Had she been waiting for this breeze? Had she been waiting for this breeze, or was it, or was she its source? That's witchcraft. She should be hanged for heresy. Mm. It's just movement of air to a lower pressure. Shh. Close your eyes and feel it. I didn't. I really didn't want to close my eyes in this weather. But I guess it's also because there's a hot girl in front of me, too. Shivering as I was, I might catch a cold if I did. Or, you know, die. Hypothermia. She stood like a... Blah, blah, blah. She stood like a still statue, unwavering by... Unwavered by the cold wind. Because she's apparently a, has a freaking heater inside of her boobs. I guess a few seconds wouldn't hurt. Hmm. Hmm. I just heard that and I was very it was touching mm -hmm. I opened my eyes Gryla was still standing there with her wi arms wide open could she really feel anything special about this air? Could she really feel anything special about this air? Did they just repeat themselves twice? Auroras are caused by solar winds, not this kind of wind. Gretla gently lowered her arms. When they touched the sides of her body, she opened her eyes. I thought where the lights are coming. Let's get into the car. Da da da. Chris? Sorry, what was it again? Let's drive to the lights! Isn't it too dark to drive? I'll drive if you're so scared. Because apparently living out in the middle of a freaking tundra, I know how to drive a car! Grylo ran into my car and flung the door open. Hold on, that's my car! I caught up with her and seized the driver's seat before she did anything crazy. Alright, I'll drive. Now we're on the same page. Grylo sat in the seat beside me and started giving me directions. After I started the engine, my feet and knees felt really heavy. What? what? Go! I looked down to find Hope sitting on my lap. Hope puppy eyed me to take him too. Hope really likes you. Maybe we'll get married in the future. I don't know. It's iffy. He's only after my food. Go! A sudden pain spread through my abdomen. Bastard bit me. Ouch, don't bite, I was joking, buddy. I patted Hope and distracted him with my hand to protect vital to protect my vital parts. You know, like my penis. Mm. Satisfied with my answer, Hope leapt from my lap and sat on the back seat, turning his head to look at the scenery outside the window. For a while we drove in silence. Sometimes Gradley would point out which direction we should be going, but that's it. Da da da. da, da, da. Stop near this frozen lake. You sure it's here? You need to get out and sniff around. It should be here. Gryla said, looking away. She got out of the car and stared at the sky. All right. I said relaxedly, taking my tripod and camera with me. I set them up and looked around. Cold. Yeah, no shit, dumbass. You're in. You're in literally Greenland. No, this takes place in Iceland. I shivered a little and got back into the car. Tell me when it's around. Da, da, da. Just when I was about to fall asleep, I suddenly heard a voice. Look, it's over here. I was right. See, that's what you get for doubting me. Shuffling my hair with my hand, I turned to look at what she was up to, and there it was. Green and blue ephemeral strokes in the sky. Can you see it now? 
Dryla held her hips with her hands and spoke in triumph. You know, because she's literally an anime figure. Of course, I'm not blind. I turned the tripod to face the lights, and then immediately peered through the viewfinder in the camera. And nothing. Just a dark sky. Huh? I looked at the camera. I had taken the lens cap off. My camera was turned on. Everything was set. Gah! I looked up in agitation. It's gone? It happens every time. I think it just moved. Dot, dot, dot. Which way? Probably that way. Come in. I grabbed her by the shoulder and dragged her into the car. Hey, don't pull my grass, you pervert. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> hmm. What now? You, for you forgot your camera. Shit. I got back out and dashed for my tripod. Ugh. I slipped on some snow and fell on my hands, which pretty much cracked the bones inside of them, so I gotta go to the hospital now. Are you okay? I shoved the snow off and grabbed my tripod, totally ignoring my broken hands. Cursing my own carelessness, I carefully white waddled my way back to the car, you know, like a penguin. They have those in Greenland. No, Iceland. So, uh, which way again? Started to snow mixed with dirt melted between my pants and jacket. You gonna give me a lap dance to keep me warm? Never mind. It was really unbearable and cold. I pushed the pedal hard, blasting the car at full speed. We shook constantly from the oven, even icy ground. I stared anxiously and intently at the sky, looking for the sparkle of hope I needed. Grilla seemed very uncomfortable with how fast the car was speeding. There! A small dash of pale green floated. I accelerated the car more. <sighs> this guy's an idiot. Sorry, this beautiful scenery. Yes, but can you drive slower? No! I accidentally snapped at her. Da, da, da. Gradley kept sight. He cut his silent and looked at me worryingly. You don't understand, this is very important to me. Finding a good spot, I stopped the car hastily and we rocked to an abrupt stop. I took a deep breath and carried my gear outside. I couldn't miss this once in a lifetime opportunity. Focus set at infinity. Uh, ISO 800, F5.6 for 30 seconds. I called myself as I looked at the viewfinder. I snapped a few photos. I speak to him again. So, how was it? You got any photos? Yeah, kinda. You don't look so good. Don't worry, I'm good. What am I doing with my life? Well, it's the same question I asked myself, buddy. I mean, why am I doing these YouTube videos every day when barely anybody watches them? I walked back and leaned on the car. The photos I took were definitely unworthy of any award. They looked like, looked like photos anyone could have snapped with their phones. I couldn't take them through some heavy Photoshop. I could take them through some heavy Photoshop lifting, but that's cheating. What's wrong? Not taking any more photos? Yeah, yeah. I, I really don't feel like doing it now. Hmm. Look, I'm sorry I got you out of here. I'll drive you back. I promise. Gradla was looking very concernedly. Wait for me in the car. I just need a break, okay? I dropped. I drooped my head and looked at the ground. Before I noticed, I had fallen asleep. I stood up and noticed the jacket I left inside the car was now cloaked on me. I looked inside the car. No one. Then I looked around. Gryla, where are you? Take this! What? Something cold and hard snapped my cheeks. What are you doing? Making you up. Can you stop it? Come on! She ignored me and proceeded to throw two more snowballs at my face. One went in my mouth and one went right on my crack. Please! I snuck behind the car to avoid her. You can't hide forever! God, she's got big cleavage. Damn. Well, if this is what you want. Behind the car, I started shoveling my own pile of snow. Here it is! Shoving up six balls of snow ready to blast, I marched out in courage. Before I could react, ten snowballs were already flying towards me. I covered my face with my arm and tried launching some of my own. You're weak! <laughs> I rolled behind the car. Too dangerous out there. Hiding is futile. Those stomping sounds grew louder. She must be moving here. Calm down, you can beat her. 20 seconds to roll a good snowball. 10 seconds to aim and throw one at her. This means four snowballs every two minutes. Came in mind while I started grabbing snow in my hands. Four snowballs, exactly. Found you! Here I come! 
<laughs> 20 snowballs came flying at me before I could say anything. How did you get 20 snowballs? Oh, okay, never mind. I'm officially dead. The end. Da da da. Whew. After a while, the hell, we got back into the car exhausted. You're really good at this. Of course. You know, I should probably go. I mean, I'll drive you home first. Okay, but where will you go? Uh, you can stay over, I think. Is that really okay? Yeah, I, I live by myself. All right. The drive back here is was easier and faster than I thought. It was only a straight road back from where we came from. Thanks for letting me stay over. No need to thank me. It's been fun. Fun for you. It's fun for you, yeah. <laughs> Carly got out of the car and went to the door. She was about to open the door when she turned around. Aren't you coming in? I'm, um, huh, it's just... Hmm. Never mind. Don't be that guy now. What guy? The guy that backs out on... You want to bet me, don't you? Okay, give me a second. I got in her house and lay on the sofa. She asked me if I wanted some tea, but I shook my head and said it's okay. I just need some rest. Just call me if you need anything. Will do. She went inside her room, leaving me alone in the living room. I stared into space, wondering about my plans here. I noticed a weird machine sitting in the corner. Wait, is that a play stop one? I walked to the machine and touched its surface. You know, I'm going to end the episode here before I go any further, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. And if you want to hear more of me and Mr. Indigo, make sure you hit that big old red subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next episode. Ciao.